Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Charles, and today we have the end of the tale of Pretty Goldilocks, a quest story that has seen so many twists and turns, and I do hope that if you are picking up the Folktale Project for the first time today, you head back and listen to the first five episodes, because now... We're going to dive right in with the conclusion of the story of Pretty Goldilocks. When Pretty Goldilocks heard what had happened, she threw herself at the king's feet and begged him to set Charming free. But the more she cried, the more angry he was, and at last she saw that it was useless to say any more, but it made her very sad. Then the king took it in his head that perhaps he was not handsome enough to please Princess Goldilocks, and he thought he would bathe his face with water from the Fountain of Beauty, which was in the flask on the shelf in the princess's room, where she had placed it that she might see it often. Now it happened that one of the princess's ladies in chasing a spider had knocked the flask off the shelf and broken it, and every drop of the water had been spilt. Not knowing what to do, she had hastily swept away the pieces of crystal and then remembered that in the king's room she had seen a flask of exactly the same shape, also filled with sparkling water. So, without saying a word, she fetched it and stood it upon the queen's shelf. Now, the water in this flask was what was used in the kingdom for getting rid of troublesome people. Instead of having their heads cut off in the usual way, Their faces were bathed with water, and they instantly fell asleep and never woke up any more. So, when the king, thinking to improve his beauty, took the flask and sprinkled the water upon his face, he fell asleep, and nobody could wake him. Little Frisk was the first to hear the news, and he ran to tell Charming, who sent him to beg the princess not to forget the poor prisoner. All the palace was in confusion on account of the king's death, But Tiny Frisk made his way through the crowd to the princess's side and said, Madam, do not forget poor Charming. Then she remembered all that he had done for her, and, without saying a word to anyone, went straight to the tower and with her own hands took off Charming's chains. Then, putting a golden crown upon his head and the royal mantle upon his shoulders, she said, Come, faithful Charming, I will make you king and will take you for my husband. Charming, once more free and happy, fell at her feet and thanked her for her gracious words. Everybody was delighted that he should be king, and the wedding which took place at once was the prettiest that can be imagined. And Prince Charming and Princess Goldilocks lived happily ever after. And that is the conclusion of the story of Pretty Goldilocks. And I've quite honestly lost count of how many happily ever afters we've had so far in this book. But this is, this is my favorite thus far. This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere that you like to get your podcasts. You can find us on Threads, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Folktale Project. And you can listen to us anywhere that you like to listen to your podcasts. As always, thank you so much for listening.